Hey, everybody. How are you guys? Hello. I am Carrie the Mortician. So welcome. This is a live chat. I try and do weekly at different times of the day, uh, morning, afternoon, because I know that there's so many people from different time zones that check in here. Hello, Naomi. My name was almost Naomi. That was the first name my parents wanted to name me. Uh, and then my dad objected. <laughs> so I ended up with Carrie. So I was almost a Naomi. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. This nighttime where I am in Michigan chat usually yields a few more people join in and jumping in. So welcome to this. Uh, happy to see you guys here. Happy to have you. Hello, everybody. Ah, look at everybody popping in. Like, this is awesome. Hello, hello. David, hit the like button sideways. Uh, Jessica, when is the new Victims of Crime video? I think in about two weeks it posts. So there will be a new one. And it's kind of a wacky one because it does go sideways. Um, we've already recorded it. And it's 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 a bit crazy. Oh, Robert, your cousin committed suicide last night. I'm so sorry. <laughs> coffee with Naomi doesn't have a nice ring to it. No, I like the alliteration of coffee with Carrie or cocktails with Carrie, which this evening there is a little glass of wine. So if you want to consider that a co cocktail, no ball cap tonight. I did try and straighten my hair today, but the, the weather doesn't... <laughs> The weather is not doing well for me. So we're going to dive in on a couple things. So that first question that I posted on that main screen is, are we scared of disease and virus and do we ever get needles? That's kind of where the question came from. As someone asked, like in the medical, do we get needle pricks and do we get exposure through things like fluids and instrument pricks, like scalp things like that. So yes, we do have exposure to all sorts of different diseases. Um, MRSA, C COVID, um, COVID is alive and active after death, um, HIV, all sorts of things that we are definitely exposed to. But there's a lot of times that people have these contagious diseases and they maybe didn't know at time of death. And so we don't know after. So we just have to take universal precautions. But yes, we definitely do sometimes get needle pokes. Or um, the last time I think I had a poke was when I was suturing someone's mouth, which mouths are disgusting. All the bacteria and all the gross stuff that is in a mouth. Ugh. So of all the needle pricks to get suturing a mouth and then accidentally pricking ugh, is kind of yuck. Um, so we will take off gloves, wash, sanitize, antibacterial. If it is bad enough, we then have to go to the hospital to get medical attention, to go in our OSHA report and everything. So we definitely have to track what happened just in case we get sick. We can track back to where that came from. So it does happen. Luckily, thankfully, not often, but it does happen. Hello, everybody. I'm not even going to try and read everybody's names. You guys are awesome that you're all here and checking in. Um, so next week, I'm going to go to Minneapolis. And I had a couple of you who have asked about doing a meet and greet. I'm looking at my schedule. It may allot for a really short meet and greet on Friday of next week. So what is that? The 15th in the morning for like an hour, maybe hour and a half for maybe like a coffee meet and greet right downtown Minneapolis. So if you're interested, email me. I'm not going to just broadly schedule something unless I know there's a few people who are going to be able to come and show up. Um, because I'm trying to come for a vacation and try and get away, but I really do want to meet some people if there are some people who want to meet, but I want to know that you're going to be there. So send me an email, carry at carrynorther.com. 
the email address is down in the description of this video and let me know, hey, I would be available Friday morning next week. Let's do this in Minneapolis. So Kathy, hey girl, we buried our mom without a bra. I think we're doomed. I think your mom's probably rejoicing <laughs> that you let her be very liberated. I once was dressing a woman and it was just not that long ago. And it was, it, I left because I was dressing with a guy as we were dressing and then kind of team dressing somebody and her bra strap was twisted. And I was like, oh, it's fine. And then I was like, oh my gosh, no, it's not. I can't imagine laying for all eternity with a twisted bra strap. So I quick fixed it. So your mom is probably super happy that you let her just be buried natural <laughs> with no, you know, bra lacking down the goods. So if someone is cremated from a sudden death, who would I contact for a death certificate? The death certificate is on file at the county clerk in the county that they were, that they died in. So that's where you would go. It depends on the state. Sometimes it's public record and sometimes it's not. So you might be able to get a record. You might not. How am I in the family? I am doing good. I am, I'm doing really good. So I am really in a good place, getting settled into the house. The girls are super happy. Um, I'm finding my new norm in life. Life is good. So uh, big smile. So super good. Thank you, Bob. Ooh, I wear my bra even to sleep. So my husband better put one on me in death. Crystal, there are some people I have known some people who have to wear a bra even to sleep. So I get, I get totally get it. How many sutures do you do to close the mouth and how exactly can you tie them from the outside? So uh, I don't use a needle injector. That's what some people use. So some people use what's called a needle injector and there is a wire with a little prong at the end that gets embedded in the top gum and the bottom gum. And then those wires are wound together to hold the mouth closed. I don't use that. I just don't care for it. I will use a C-curve needle. So it's shaped like a C. Um, and that's because it can make the turns that I want it to make. So I will, with suture thread and that needle, go in. Y'all are going to get up and close with my mouth here. The outside here, I go down, come out behind the bone here, and then out and then back in the same hole. And when you come back out, you come behind the teeth. So when you're locking that suture, it's around a bone. So it's never going to break. And then when you do the top, you go, okay, up through here and it's going to come out the nose. Then you go back in and you bust through the septum and come out the other side of the nose and then back down. So your suture goes actually inside the nose through the septum and then around the mandible. So these aren't soft tissue that's going to decay and break through possibly during viewing. It's on solid surfaces. And then what you're left with is a string here and here. You suture them together and they lay under the inside of the lip. That's what you do. If that makes any sense, because all I'm doing is pointing at my mouth. So I kind of hard to explain. But Dr. Antone, thank you. Could not say I <laughs> You guys are still talking about bras. I love it. Um, second note I'm going to talk about. I had talked about the Fiddlehead Casket Company out of Nova Scotia that makes that bookshelf that morphs like a transformer into a coffin for burial or casket. And I want to order one and I want to put one together for a video for you guys so you could see how functional it is, how not functional it is, how easy to put together it is. Um, so I was going to start collecting. If you guys want to contribute to that 
crazy video I'm going to do. You're welcome to either in the video now and you can, what is this button? The little show your support for Carrie the Mortician button. You can do it during a video. You can go to Patreon and do a one-time uh, thing to support me. So that's going to be coming up. I'm going to order one. I don't want the Fiddlehead Casket Company to have to cut their their income at all by doing this and we have to pay for shipping. So that's going to be coming up. Some of these wacky ideas I just love. So Crystal, let those girls breathe. Oh my goodness. Have I ever done a funeral for somebody and no one showed up? I have done a funeral where we knew nobody was probably coming and that was the case. Nobody was there. It was just me and the cemetery personnel. And I've done some funerals that have been also very minimal where we've had less than five people at the funerals. It is sad. It is sad that people live their whole lives and that's all they really leave of people remembering them. But there's people who want that. There's people who leave or live reclusive lives and they, they don't interact with people and they just, I don't know, they just want a quiet, secluded life. And that's fine. That's, that's our choice. So I've got some questions. There are companies whose workers have to come in periodically to have labs drawn for surveillance of certain levels of substances in their blood like heavy metals or toxins. Do we have a similar screening protocol for embalmers for substances? What would you screen for? We do not. However, so in the preparation room, there is a test that is to be done called a STEL or a PEL test. These are exposure level tests to formaldehyde. So the embalmer will wear this, this, um, I don't know, this thing that clips to them and you pull off the exposure part that basically sucks in the air. It doesn't suck, suck it in. It's just exposed to the air for a certain period of time. One is done for a short period of time. And then the other is done for the duration of the embalming. You cover it back up and then you send it in and they test what is in that absorbance or absorbency pack that's inside of there. It's basically going to tell them if there's not enough airflow in the space, if there's not enough ventilation, if you're not embalming well that you have too much formaldehyde everywhere. And so that will tell you if you are in kind of the safe zone when you're working with the embalming fluids. So that is a law that that has to be done in every preparation room. Now, you as an embalmer can request from your employer that that is done for every single embalmer, that you yourself can do that test. Or you can sign off that you trust another embalmer to wear those tests and that you trust their embalming skills and their embalming way to report back the testing. So it's up to each embalmer whether they want to do one for themselves or whether they trust one person to do it for the company. Hey, Duty Ron, it's been a while. Thanks, Duty Run. It's good to see you too. I was thinking about you the other day, actually. If you go to school to become a funeral director, would you be able to pay for school with student loans? Yes, you can get student loans. Have you ever heard that if your loved one is not embalmed, the funeral home won't change their clothing? No, but they may charge to change their clothing and to get them prepared in different clothing as part of their their fees. Can a simple blood test tell you how someone died? No, not always. You can do toxicology levels, which can tell you a lot of things, but it can, it may not specifically tell you how someone died. Hey, Susan, thank you for watching. You're so sweet. In the event of a needle poke, can you send the blood from a deceased to be tested? Do you get prep from hospital and blood test and one a month later? You could if you wanted to. You would just have to find the lab that you're getting tested in. And what are you testing for? You have to really decide what you're getting it tested for. 
has anyone requested to be laid out in a comfortable sleeping position, like on their side? I have not had that. People have joked that they want to be laid in different positions, but I've never had anyone actually where the family is like, yes, we want this and we want them on their side. And like, I'm a side sleeper. Anybody else a side sleeper? I'm a side sleeper with a pillow between my knees for that lumbar support. Uh, and so the thought of laying flat on my back in a casket in that position it makes me think I'm going to be in agony <laughs> in the hereafter. But, you know, you're not feeling anything. At least I believe that. So I don't know. Do toxicology, do toxicology reports always come back months later? Or can they do come sooner? Um, they say up to 12 to 18 weeks. Yes, we sometimes get them back pretty quickly. During COVID, it was taking forever, it felt like, to get a lot of results back just because of the lag in everything in our world. However, now we're back up to like eight weeks, maybe 12 weeks um, at the most for toxicology. What are some funny but true funeral stories? Glenda, it really, it depends. To me, my humor is completely different than yours. So that's all subjective. Have I ever buried people in their pajamas? Yes, I have. Uh, robes, pajamas, nightgowns, you name it. Uh, we have had people who have been laid out for visitation in one outfit and then changed into pajamas for burial. So Oklahoma requires a bachelor's degree for funeral directors and embalmers. I'm supposed to start in January, but if we move states, should it be easy to get licensed elsewhere if I already have the bachelor's? Yes, you're not then having to advance your education to meet requirements. You are at the top of your requirement for education. Uh, however, is it a dual license? It is in just Jessica, is it a dual license in Oklahoma that you're getting just one license for both positions? Has anyone been buried in a diaper? We do use adult incontinence pads often. There are some places that do place one on every single deceased. Have I been asked to save old loved ones tattoos? So that is a thing that is done by some very few specific companies where they will cut out the tattoo preserve it in a specific way for the family. It is illegal for a funeral director to cut parts off of a deceased unless there's some huge liability paperwork signed by the family to allow that. I have, though, taken photos of tattoos on a deceased for the family and given that to them. Also, though, with signatures allowing us to do that. My granddaughter's boyfriend wrecked his motorcycle a week ago and they cut the vent off last night. I was told that his facial bones were all crushed. My question is, will we be able to view him? Thanks. Pamela, that's been, I, there's no way for me to know. That's such a wide range of what he could look like um, and up to the funeral directors and embalmers in their comfort level. Um... A year or so ago, I watched the mini series about the Chernobyl disaster. The first responders, as well as many disaster workers, were riddled with radiation poisoning and suffered horrific death. In such an event, how would you as a funeral director and balmer care for the victims? Would you even be able to care for them? Is there a doomsday protocol? Such a great question. So the CDC, just like with a lot of viruses and things, you know, like if Ebola, Ebola breaks out, we can go to our playbook for Ebola deaths to find out how we're supposed to get dispose of those deceased, whether we cremate, bury, if we can embalm, you know, what we do. There is that same kind of protocol for a lot of different scenarios with radiation. Radiation has a half-life where it is to a safe level. 
Um, and so we would just have to reference what those were to know when we could handle and what that safe level was, whether we just had to put someone in a cooler for a specific period of time, whether we had to get them in the ground quickly, whether we had to cremate them quickly. So it's not something we obviously encounter all the time. So we have to reference some magical playbook that we hope exists in those scenarios to make sure we are keeping ourselves and the public more so safe. What will Carrie do for 100,000 subs? No giveaways, 100 cartwheels. So what was it? I did 15 cartwheels at 15,000 subscribers, which seems like an eon ago at this point. I was so dizzy doing 15 cartwheels in a row. I think it was 15. And I don't even know. I don't know what I'll do for 100,000 subs. I feel like I should do something pretty impressive and amazing, but I don't know yet. Um, what was it? I did 20 hugs or 25 hugs at 20 or 25,000. I hugged like a whole bunch of strangers. <laughs> There's a video of it. Um, it was, that was super fun. Does the bowel and bladder content stay in the body after embalming? Potentially. Um, our goal during embalming is to aspirate out as much bowel and bladder contents as possible. Um, to preserve those areas because there's a lot of bacteria and we want that kind of gone. Hello. Do they really glow in the dark? Who glow in the dark? Nobody glows in the dark. Has anyone ever asked to lay beside and hold their deceased loved one for a few minutes? I have not had anybody ask, but I do know people who have that they've removed them, laid them on the floor and leave with them for a while. Um, it can happen. It can be done. Can you imagine not getting to lay next to your child or lay next to your spouse after however many years? I can't even imagine that. Um, that's like sadness. I, I don't even want to think about that. You can't do that or it's hard to do that. Um, yeah, I can't even think about that. Yay, Judy Ron. You are awesome. How about an embalming for all those subscribers? Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. But, oh, Adam, do you ever have someone you took care of that still sticks in your mind? I have so many people that I have specific memories of, either from the removal, the family, the cemetery, them spending time with them in the preparation room, embalming them, dressing them, so many things, so many funerals, so many moments, so many little moments that are in my mind and will forever be with me. Like it just, those don't go away. And there's weird triggers. Sometimes it's a song that I played. Sometimes it's a casket that I only have ever ordered for that and that I see a picture of or an urn or I see the family or I see drive past the house that I took the deceased out of. There's a million little memories that we carry around as funeral directors that are probably super morbid to a lot of people, but they're, they're not. They're just part of what we've done. If you donate your eyes, what do you put in the sockets to maintain shape for viewing? Asking for my daughter. Kathy, that's a great question. It's funny. There's some people at, talking about this recently. So sometimes they'll just remove the cornea and they leave the ooey gooey socket, the rest of the eyeball there, and all the vitreous fluid. And it's, you just have to remove it. And it's like a big, for lack of a better word, just because you guys like description, like the snot ball that you pull out from inside the eye. And then you have to dry out that socket. And you don't have to put something back in. There are people who use almost like ping pong balls, but smaller. And they'll put those in just to maintain the shape. You can just fill the orbit with cotton, though, and an eye cap over it, which is what I do a lot of the times. But there are some people who really want that round, circular look to the eye. So how about a golden trocar for 100000 What would I do with a golden trocar? Just like wield it around like a princess? We have no COVID rules right now going on, no restrictions here in Michigan. Do you, the funeral homes, remove bodies from home or is it the medical examiner only? No, we go to get them. Uh, 
I saw on YouTube a strange wake request, a dead teen position playing video games. Yes, it's called extreme embalming. I have somebody that I'm going to be interviewing that has done extreme embalming. Yay! Um, to explain to us what they did for their process. Would I embalm a family member? I have. I've embalmed my grandparents. I embalmed my niece. So I've definitely, I would. I don't know what my limitations on that would be. I think it's all in the moment and what I feel comfortable with. Would I involve my parents? Would I involve my brother or my sister? I don't know. It's all going to depend on how I feel in the moment. I would rather have the opportunity to say no, though. Art, am I a football fan? I am a football fan. So I'm a Bears fan. The Bears. So go Chicago. Um, I d you know, if I was to watch college, it would probably be U of M, Michigan. Um, but I do. I like... I like football. I like watching baseball in person. I like any sporting event for the most part in person. It's just fun. The camaraderie and the crowd and it's just a good time. Have you ever had anyone that had a lost limb but kept it to be buried with them? Asked because it, my ex lost his legs and he was asked if he wanted to keep them for burial. What did he do, Debbie? I want to know what he did. Um, I have not personally had anybody bring in a extremity that wanted me to hold it for when they did die down the road. I, I was at a funeral home once and I was getting a tour and they had their room of cremated remains because every funeral home seems to have one where people have not picked them up and they had somebody's arm had been cremated and the box was there and it was waiting for when they died. Janae, you know, it's, it's, it's sad, but it's a blessing that I get to do that for them. If when my loved ones died, I got to care for them. It's, I wouldn't want somebody else to do it. I would always, I think, regret that if I didn't do that myself. So it, it's, it's a personal blessing in a little bit of ways, but it's nice that you can be able to do that. Papa Smurf, thank you. I do like hockey. I was just saying tonight, I was telling um, somebody that I haven't been to a hockey game in forever, but hockey's kind of fun. You know, the fighting and the teeth and the blood and yeah, it's kind of fun. My uh, competitive nature kind of likes the, the physical battle that happens during hockey. It's kind of fun. Have I done a funeral for a stillborn? Yes, I have done many. Got to get to these questions. You mentioned that certain opioids and chemotherapy drugs neutralize the embalming fluid and that a body appears to be properly embalmed can be loosey-goosey. Because of this, are embalmers tending to use higher index fluids on all cases to guard against unforeseen effects of drugs? No, they're not. It's not like a blanketed protocol but if you do know there's certain things, people may embalm more aggressively or may use different kinds of fluids. Some people have their own concoctions that they come up with that work well for them. If a body is badly emaciated, would the embalmer inject using higher pressure to deliberately swell the tissue to make it appear fuller and reduce the need for extensive work with tissue filler? These are good questions, Timothy. Um, some embalmers, yes, they will use pressure to swell the tissue out a little bit to fill out the person when you can tell and you know that they're severely emaciated. So yes, you can use that injection to our benefit to restore some of that fill to a person. If a body is in advanced decomposition, is cremated, can the body be cremated in the body bag? Or would it have to be removed? No, they do not have to be. They can be cremated right inside that body bag. The crematory operator will find a zipper afterwards or part of a zipper, obviously, because that's some metallic. Hey, Marshall, thank you. Woohoo, Marshall wants to see me put a casket together, I think, <laughs> from scratch. I don't know if I'm going to need tools for this fiddlehead casket thing, but we're going to see. We're going to see how handy I can be. <laughs> I may need to call in some friends or something. How about embalming in the Olympics? So if, if embalming in the Olympics was a thing, I think it would be the most um, 
aggressively like em embalmers and funeral directors. We all think we're the best. We all <laughs> we're very, I don't know if arrogance is the right word, but we all think we're really good at what we do. Um, so I think it would be quite strong competition. That could be interesting. What happens to babies who have been miscarried? It depends where you're at. If you want the baby saved, some hospitals dispose of the babies. Um, you can embalm, you can bury, you can anything you want, cremate. <laughs> Linda, you turn into a maniac at hockey games. Yeah, I think this this winter I'm going to have to go to some hockey games because I haven't been in forever. Um, it feels like forever, but it is kind of fun. Uh, my girls have never been to a hockey game, so I need to introduce them. I think it would be fun to go to. We purchased a casket from the funeral home and it came seven days late and we were told we couldn't. Bernard, <laughs> Bernard, you really want to see me put a casket together. I feel like I need a toolbox. I'm going to have to go buy some new tools before this. <laughs> um, I don't know if you know how handy I am, but I, I, I felt really excited when I um, programmed my remote control for my garage door opener. So I don't know if I'm the handiest sort, but I guess we'll find out uh, what we're doing. So hello down in Georgia. What part of Georgia are you in, Bernard? Can you get a rubber mannequin and show us how to suture on the lips? Let me, I need to figure out a good way to do the lip. Well, I don't suture the lips. You're suturing the whole mandible closed. But I'll have to think on that one. What's a good way I can try and show you guys that one? Yeah, Jeremy, embalming is Olympic sport. That's kind of funny. What happens if you are at a removal and the deceased is very large and you don't have enough help? You call for more help. You explain to the family because of your loved one's size, we want to be able to respectfully take them from this home or wherever you're at. And that's going to require some more individuals to come. And then you call in more help and you figure it out. Trouble making pups. That's awesome that you played hockey. <laughs> Janae. Yeah. Me playing a casket together could get quite interesting. Couldn't it? <laughs> um, sorry. Yeah. Morgan. Um, so the casket was seven days late. I'm really confused by that. How is it? I don't understand how it's seven days late. We couldn't hold the services until it came. And you were charged extra. So where did the funeral home get this casket from? Why was it seven days late? It makes no sense. We get caskets next day. I don't know anybody who doesn't. I don't know why it would take seven days. So unless you specialty ordered a casket. Well, Batesville right now, um, they've gone through a couple stretches where they couldn't get their wood caskets, but they would at no charge to you upgrade to the next up. So I'm not sure why it would take seven days to get a casket unless the family refused the free upgrade. If that was a if that was a situation, they got it from a third party casket company. Well, it wouldn't be third party if the funeral home got it. If you ordered it, it would be a third party casket company. For them to order it is not third party. So they should have gotten a different casket for you quicker. That's the funeral home's fault for not going and doing that. Can the family of a deceased choose that they want their loved one to be buried in a cemetery? Yeah, they can. If there's space permitting, like you asked, um, Ron, if there is space, you can go out and you can choose where in the cemetery you want those grave spaces. Did you ever go to a removal and no one was there, but the deceased? No, there's either always um, medical examiner personnel EMTs, police, family, hospice, somebody's there. Yes, Walmart and Amazon, you can buy caskets from lots of different places. 
lots and lots. And the funeral home cannot charge you for purchasing from an outside place. You just have to follow their rules that are set for any casket company that they receive from. Yeah, Jenny, something's wrong with that funeral home. Ooh, Lee, the website says that you only need a hammer and it is includes and take only 30 minutes to put together. Oh my gosh, we're going to set a timer and I'm going to not let anybody help me and we're going to see if I can put this thing together in 30 minutes. Maybe I should do a live, should I do a live video doing this guys, putting this casket together or should I just record it and make a video out of it? You guys tell me because I don't think I can put it together and interact with you guys. Hey, Billy. Oh, they closed the funeral home down. So, Janae, this was just a bad funeral home, it looks like. Do it, Paula. <laughs> do it. Do it. I like the chanting. I feel as if there's chanting live, live, live. <laughs> you guys are so fun. That would be fun. I'll have to do one evening a live video, Carrie putting together the Fiddlehead Casket Company casket. I need to get it ordered this week. That would be fun. Does socioeconomic status ever play a role in how you care for someone? This is probably not done intentionally, but if a family pays for a more expensive funeral service, do you find yourself putting forth a little more time and effort when preparing the deceased? Ron, I think that's such an honest and good question. And I can say that I'm sure there's funeral directors that do that. I think it's just human nature that some people do that. I am almost opposite. If I am working with someone who appears to have not had means, their care was neglected, their nails are long, their body's dirty, they're maybe unloved or forgotten in the world, I will probably pour in more <laughs> time and effort into them. Um, especially if it's a child or something, I feel as if that you want to give them what they didn't get in life. Does that make sense? Um, so I would probably think the opposite for myself in kind of knee jerk reaction to that question. <laughs> Carolina mama. Yeah. It could be some colorful vocabulary. So those of you who think that I'm super sweet and I don't curse or anything, you might get a whole new view. <laughs> you might get a whole new vantage point on Carrie the mortician. So. Oh, you want to alley cat. It would cost you a lot though, uh, for me to build it and then ship it to you. Um, but I'll sign it. Would that be fun? How do Muslims enter within 24 hours without a death certificate? So we don't need a death certificate in Michigan to bury. You just do the burial permit. You don't need a death certificate. That'll sometimes come the week after the burial. How do funeral homes handle deceased who must be stored for several months before they can be buried? Are they refrigerated for that entire period of time? No, if they're embalmed, they usually don't go back in for refrigeration. They'll just be stored sometimes in a cooler area. If there's maybe a basement below the typical care area, they may go into that basement area. Otherwise, they may just be placed in storage in their casket. <laughs> Robert, has Elvis been seen in the Kalamazoo area recently? No, no Elvis sightings. No Elvis sightings. Is it only a Southern thing for people to say who did the body? Yeah, we don't phrase it up here like that. Who did the body? That means what funeral home cared for the person. Correct, David? Just tell me if I'm wrong. Um, but no, no, that's we don't phrase it that way up here. While well, having beers with the boys. Oh, my gosh. So you want me to be drinking beer and putting a kid? Ask it together. I think that sounds like it could be a train wreck. It could be super fun though. Avalanche one, where do I find my merchandise? So I have a new um, business that's doing my merchandise, doing a few things. I am selling my mugs still. You can buy off my website, carrynorthy.com backslash or front slash, whichever way you want to slash shop. 
And then I have a new like koozies and t-shirts available um, through a new company that is just getting them up on their website today. Hey, Ash Mars, just like, um, I'm not falling out of my chair. So when you know, you know, guys, who's been with me and watching this video is coming. That's naughty. Remember what we're talking about? Naughty funeral directors. So this is coming. Oh, don't forget the elf costume. I am not wearing an elf costume while putting together a casket. <laughs> oh, are there any cases that stick with you where you feel like it was not your best work and you wish you had done something differently, like spending more time on cosmetics? Oh my gosh. Ron is asking the best questions in this email to me. Yes, there are cases earlier in my career that I now know that if I had that person in front of me now would have cared for them, not better, but I know that my restoration would have been better. I would have tried harder because I would have known the possibilities. Earlier in my career, I didn't have the skill. I didn't have somebody to sh that was showing me the possibilities with some of the advanced restoration things. Small towns, we don't have as much as exposure to certain situations. And so um, there are a couple cases I go back to in my mind that I think, gosh, I wish I would have known. I wish I, you don't know what you don't know. And those were some of those cases. So Hey, Catherine Hall. Good to see you. Am I going trick-or-treating? No, I am not going trick-or-treating. Oh, so good to see you guys. Um, I'm thankful you guys bring such good questions. And I'm thankful you guys care about kind of me and my life and what's going on. And I have opened up my life to you enough so that you guys know kind of what's up with me and and things but rest assured super happy lots of good things I have some really good people in my life and um, my family and just in a really 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 good place so I'm excited about going to Minneapolis next week again if you're interested in doing a meet and greet next Friday morning for like hour hour and a half somewhere right downtown Minneapolis let me know I will schedule it if I know there's some people interested. Uh, I want to make sure I'm making time for you guys. I, I love to meet some of you in person. It's such a great thing. Um, yeah. And my mom. Yes, my mom is such a crazy good sport. I have a video idea I want to do with her here coming up too. So I don't think her and I. So my mom and I are so similar that we are both very in charge people. I can't imagine us trying to put a casket together. <laughs> I don't know how well it would go. <laughs> oh, I have no plans, Judy, to come to Florida right now, but I do need to come down there here soon. Yes, I would love to come back to the UK. There's so many places I would love to go to find out about funeral and burial practices, but also just to visit and just to see. But there's so many places right here, like Northern Michigan and, and places I want to go to. So got some special people lined up that I want to travel with this next year and just make some good new memories and everything. So yeah. Are caskets rented in the case of a viewing before cremation? Yes. Check out my two minute on rental caskets. Thank you, Pamela. Yeah, I like to keep you guys in the know, at least enough, uh, so you know what's up. It's nice to have support, and it's nice for you to understand some of the fact that when you go to a funeral home and you see funeral directors, they have a lot that they're doing behind the scenes. Like, going to work after my divorce and all of that, when I was in the lowest low points, I was still caring for people. You can't turn off caring for people when you're a funeral director because it's your job. No matter what crap is going on behind the scenes and at home, you still have to just kind of put it aside and do your job. 
some of those days I wish I was doing just like making the donuts, you know, like I have the Dunkin' Donut, you know, make the donuts, make the donuts. I wish I had something that was not as emotionally um, trying of a position on some of those days, but it keeps you going, keeps you humble. Yeah. Mac, Connor Winston down in St. Louis. Let's do a St. Louis shout out quick because you guys always bring a lot of people from St. Louis. So we're going to do a St. Louis shout out. If you're from St. Louis, shout out that you are from there because I always love seeing how many people are in St. Louis. That's crazy to me. I don't know why. It's so weird how many people in St. Louis follow me. No worries about the divorce. It's interesting that people apologize or say sorry about your divorce. I'm not sorry. I'm in a good place and it's okay. Um, but it, I go back to how people, when they tell you they're sorry about somebody dying, you always, or they're like, oh, so-and-so died. And you're like, that's okay. You kind of do the head bop. That's okay thing. Almost to, I don't know. It's like a knee jerk reaction response. And I think that that's kind of the, you want to tell people you're sorry for their divorce, but it's more, you're sorry that they're hurting. And I get that. So thank you guys for that support. My favorite coffee. If for a long time, it was Pete's coffee. I've been on a green mountain kick. I don't know why. Huh. And I've been doing a little pumpkin spice, even the dark chocolate mocha that just came out. The seasonal coffee this time of year. I swear I gained 10 pounds just from coffee creamers and stuff. But, ooh, Joe in St. Louis. Ooh, Ash Mars down St. Louis. Seriously, I'm not joking. St. Louis area. There's something in the water. It's like carry the mortician. It's like I sprinkled some carry the mortician crack or something when I was down there last year. <laughs> um, yeah, I like a uh, full roasted coffee that has a lot of flavor, low, low acidity. So favorite ice. Ooh, you guys are asking just like personal preference things. Favorite ice cream flavor. So I can't do dairy. Um, so it's Ice cream I can get in like coconut based or almond milk based. My favorite flavor growing up, I always loved Blue Moon, was a big favorite, which I have not been able to find dairy free. Chocolate marshmallow. Mm, so good. Neapolitan is good though, where you get all three flavors the vanilla, chocolate, and the strawberry all together. That's some good stuff. Mint chocolate chip. Oh, that's good. Um, man. Yeah, I, I'm a big, I do like ice cream. I don't love a lot of sweet, sweet, sweet stuff, but sometimes you just got to get in the mood for ice cream. I don't really drink espresso, espresso. Yeah. Blue moon Marie, you know, and then your tongue's blue and it's kind of fun because your tongue's blue, especially when you're a kid. What are a band whistling? I don't know what that means. Hey, John. Blue moon, the beer is pretty good too. Yes. All right, I'm going to wind down. I thank you guys for joining. Thank you so much. Um, go check out videos. If you're not subscribed, click subscribe. I have a big goal. Next week I'm doing on, I think it's on the night. No, what day am I doing it? On the 13th next week. There's a, there's a little contest. It's more a challenge that I've set for myself, but I need your help. So I've put a contest on it. So if you guys can help me achieve my goal in a 24-hour period, I'm going to give away a whole bunch of mugs. So watch for that to get posted next week, and you guys can give me a hand to help me out. So thank you guys for your support. Subscribe. Share the channel. Get it to people. It's not about bringing people to me and me getting to certain numbers. It's about people getting information they need. I'm a firm believer in educating and getting correct, accurate information in the hands of people that need it. People who are going to make funeral arrangements and need to know things. People who want to make good decisions and need to know things. Get it to them. Thank you guys so much. Hey, Mac, I'm, you are just such a doll. Um, next Wednesday, I believe the 13th is the day that I'm going to be doing it. So for that. I appreciate you guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Ooh, where are the zombie Skittles this year? Oh, my gosh, Michelle. I don't know if they're having zombie Skittles. Was that just a year ago that I did those? Those things were 
wicked vile. <laughs> they were so gross. So gross. So gross. Yeah, huge ick factor when it came to zombie Skittles. So I will embrace the ick but not the zombie skittles <laughs> for real. So I will. Ooh, and duty Ron is going live at nine. So go check him out. Thank you guys. Bye.